Welcome painters, today's video is sponsored by the company Signum Games. Here's a link to their website. I am going to paint this fantastic figure. So if you're ready, let's go for it. First of all, I primed the miniature. This time I used black primer from Vallejo. Here's a cool link to a video in which I talk about what colors to use to prime your minis. Now I will paint the base color with these colors. This video is dedicated to all those painters who don't have an airbrush. I will only use the brush in this video. That goes for you too. Let's start. I do the mixing. I will use an Artist Opus brush size 2. Here you can see the dilution, a couple of little drops to apply thin layers. We apply a thin layer, let it dry, and then repeat. I will paint all of the skin. Here too. And here you can see the final result. I applied three to four thin layers. Next step, I will use somber gray and blue green. I will apply glazes and washes. Here are some links to the videos where I talk about glazes and washes. If you are new to the channel, I recommend you watch them. All right. I will apply glazes and washes to the skin. What for? To change the tone of the fur and also to add depth. So I combine both colors to give that effect on the coat and change the tone a bit. Notice that I take a little bit of paint, more diluted than normal, and I apply this glaze to the head on the fur. And very important, apply this glaze, let it dry, and then do it again. On the deepest locks, I use more somber gray and apply it like a wash, so the paint enters through the strands and achieves definition. I apply it on the legs, too. This step is very important, so do it patiently, with no rush. As you can see with just two coats, I've changed the skin color. On the neck, I apply more wash. On the tails, the same. I apply a wash all over. After that, I repeat more on the depths of the fur to get definition. I don't forget the hands either. And here you can see the final result. Next step, I will paint the tips of the tails now. I will use these colors, Hexed Lichen, Warlord Purple, Squid Pink, and finally, Light Flesh. I'm going to mix a little Squid Pink and Warlord Purple. I make the mixture and paint the ends of the tails. We will apply thin layers. This purple color goes well with cold and warm colors. I promised you that I would record a color theory video and I still have to. I need a little more time because I want to make a very useful video for beginners as well. 
For people who are also starting out in the figure world, they need to know color theory. So I guess in a month, more or less, I will record this video to explain everything about color theory. Well, as you can see, I keep painting the tails, well, the tips of the tails. Notice that I mixed Warlord Purple with a little squid pink sometimes to paint the first shadows. I apply this color more on the deeper parts. For example, inside the ears, the same. I paint with this mixture, and as you can see that just with soft touches, the color scheme is already very cool. Come on, let's paint a bit more. I will apply hexed lichen with the washes technique to give it depth. For example, the inside of the ears is perfect. I even apply this wash on the fur between the ears. I also use the hexed lichen for the eye sockets. So this she-wolf is getting definition. She is called Kumiko. I encourage you to have a look at their website. This company has fantastic miniatures. Well, I keep painting. As you can see, I take some more hexed lichen to shade a bit more. Notice with these shadows, we get more definition. I frame the eyes a bit more. I also apply this purple to the points of the tails. Notice I also highlight the tips of the tails a bit with squid pink. Having all of the colors on the wet palette helps us a lot while painting. We add more definition. As you can see, the more layers on the same area, the more intense the color becomes. Now I'm using more squid pink to highlight more. Notice I also apply this color on the fingertips. On the knee, here I apply a glaze. Just two layers makes it change a lot. These glazes greatly enrich the flesh. As you can see, I apply a glaze, then let it dry and paint the tails again. I combine several parts at a time. I also apply a little bit of squid pink to the locks of the face. Notice I applied squid pink and now with the dampened brush, I erase it a bit. I unload the paint on the face so I get both colors on there, the bluish tone from the beginning and a little of the pink too. And that's the final result. We are ready for the next step. Next step, the most important, since I have to highlight the skin and fur. First of all, I put all of the colors on the wet palette. I will use an artist opus brush size zero. Pay close attention to the palette in the square to see how I am combining the colors with each other. Well, as I said before, it's time to highlight the skin and fur. We have to simulate the fur effect. So how do I do it? Painting lines, as you will see next. They are very thin lines, very close together. This way I create the fur effect. I recommend a brush with a very fine tip to do it properly. 
And the process, I think, is quite easy. You just have to make lines to create that effect. Go slowly, you're in no rush. Come on, as you can see, they are very short lines. I do it little by little. I begin on the leg. Notice that it's not a pure white. It has some gray and blue. I also want to apologize for the quality of the video. I am still recording by myself and I still don't know how to control the parameters well. But hey, I still have a long way to go to learn all that. I hope everything happening with the COVID-19 will be resolved as soon as possible so I am able to record with my partner Ruth and offer you high quality videos like the ones you can find on the channel. As you can see, I keep highlighting the face. I mark the fur a bit more. With a couple of layers, I get the volume effect. Under the eye, too. And the top of the head, I apply these lines to simulate the fur. I also paint the fur a bit to create volume. Don't worry if you overdo the highlights. You can take the previous color, the blue-green, and apply a glaze to reduce the intensity. I am marking it, and maybe later I will apply a glaze to soften it. Notice I also paint the locks of the ears, which are very important. I also apply some shadows to create depth near the eye. I always tell you the best thing about using a wet palette is that the colors remain fresh all the time. Look here, like on the lower lip, how I illuminate it and I already create volume. A soft layer to mark it. The face is very important. Work on it and take your time. As you can see, I am working on the lights, adding shadows, and also highlighting. Little by little, this is already taking shape. I keep highlighting the head. The snout. I apply squid pink. And as you can see, with just a light touch, it changes a lot. With just a couple of touches of squid pink, I change the tone of this she-wolf. Of Kumiko. So, I add a little bit of squid pink under the eye to give it a different hue. Also, on the lower lip. I keep marking the strands. You see that the lower locks are darker than the upper ones. Very important that. I frame the eyes more with hexed lichen. I also took the opportunity to emphasize the fur more, painting with lines.
And notice now with blue-green, I apply a glaze in that area, and you can see how the shade changes. Just a soft touch. This color goes great with this color scheme. Very important to highlight the fingers of the paw. Notice I use squid pink to mark it a bit, and I get a very important plane of light. Now I will work on the tails. I do the same, paint little lines to simulate fur. I add more highlights on the upper parts of the tails. On the lower parts, I reduce the intensity. How do I do that? Well, the more layers you put in the same area, the more intense the color becomes. So, the upper areas, I'm applying more layers of highlight. As you can see, little by little, the tails are highlighted. I add more layers. And here, you can see the final result. Last step. Magical touches! In this step, we will add definition to the skin and fur by retouching everything. For example, I use glazes to mark this shade a bit more on the knee. I also retouch the highlights. Notice how I mark them a bit more and refine everything little by little. If I notice it needs more shadow, then I'll apply it, since I have all the colors on the wet palette, which helps a lot. Notice I am working a bit more on the face, refining it a bit more. Since it is one of the most important parts of the mini. Notice that now, with blue-green, I apply a glaze Next, with Hexed Lichen, I shade a bit more. I retouch the tail's highlights. I frame them more. As I always say, the more layers you apply to the same part, the more intense the color becomes. We are polishing everything well. Come on. Look how I mark the lines. I do little lines to highlight. A little trick is to use squid pink and paint inside of the locks. This way we combine both tones on the tips of the tails. This bluish white combines perfectly with that pink. I highlight the tips of the tails a bit more. And now it's time to polish everything. Let me know any questions you may have about the process in the comments. Here you need some more highlighting. I mark it more. As you can see, 
With these touches, the figure changes a lot. We'll apply a glaze here to give it this tone. The inside, too. I keep marking more. Now I will paint the eyes with the light flesh color. Pay close attention how I paint the eye socket, and it's almost done. This mini's eyes are sculpted. There's an indentation with the paint a bit thicker, add a brush stroke over it, and it's done. The eye socket is white and the pupil black. And now with deep yellow. I am painting the eye just a brush stroke too. I use deep yellow since it is a color which contrasts a lot with the flesh. The flesh is painted in cold colors, so it will be eye-catching. Here you can see the final result. I hope you liked the process a lot. Any questions, you can leave in the comments. think about the video? Interesting? Leave a comment so I will know your opinion. Don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. Ring the bell to be advised of the next video. And don't forget to click on the video description if you want to know all the products I use. If you live in Spain, you can get all the products at Goblin Trader, in France at Hobby Shop, in the United Kingdom at Element Games, and in Mexico at Art Hobby. Guys, paint a lot! and see you in the next video.